This is Wetteren in Belgium, a 12-hectare test field belonging to ILVO, the Institute for Agricultural and Fisheries Research. In 2010, the coexistence, or presence next to each other, of genetically modified and conventional maize was tested in a realistic practical situation. European and Flemish legislators want farmers to be free to choose between conventional, organic or genetically modified crops. Legal regulations ensure that no economic damage is caused by the mixing of the crops. In 2010, Flanders published its decree on coexistence for genetically modified crops, as well as the first rules for specific crops, specifically for maize. The decree includes administrative directives for implementation and prescribes an isolation distance of 50 meters. This means that with GMO maize, a 50 meter distance must be maintained from neighboring maize fields. But do the directives really work? Are they feasible for farmers who want to grow GMO maize? And can a grower of conventional or organic maize, whose field borders a field of GMO maize, be sure that his harvest will remain intact according to the official definition. This means that his maize will never contain more than 0.9% GMO, because over that limit he must label his harvest as GMO product. Ilvo studied this in an experiment in which one hectare of genetically modified maize was sown, the Mon 810 variety. The surrounding parcels were sown with conventional maize. Over 500 samples of maize and pollen from all phases of cultivation were painstakingly collected, dried and ground to powder. DNA was extracted from each powered sample. PCR analysis specifically for MON 810 was performed on this DNA. In this way, it was possible to determine whether GMO material was present and if so, how much. Let's see what the risks of admixture look like in practice, step by step. Beginning with sowing. This was because GMO seeds might have been left in the machine. We had the planting machine sow the central GMO field first. The machine was emptied in the usual way. It was then used to sow a field with conventional maize. In the first few hundred meters of that field, the researchers looked at whether maize plants had grown from a conventional or GMO maize seed. Using DNA analysis, we found that admixture had indeed occurred during sowing. GMO plants appeared sporadically up to 300 meters into the non-GMO field. Ilvo took a closer look at the planting machine and conducted extra tests with colored and non-colored kernels to see how long the colored seeds continued to be deposited after emptying. The distance of 300 meters was confirmed and the researchers were able to determine that up to 300 seed kernels could remain in each seed hopper in the machine. Ilvo proposes quite a simple solution. The agricultural contractor can easily remove every last grain from the machine by unscrewing the disc coulters after seeding and manually emptying the hopper underneath. This takes at most 15 minutes. Now let's take a look at the risk of admixture by wind-blown pollen, about which there has been a great deal of speculation. If GMO pollen fertilizes a non-GMO plant, then the maize kernels, and only the maize kernels, will contain traces of GMO material. To study the degree of cross-pollination, Ilvo sowed conventional maize at distances of 0, 50 and 80 meters around the field of GMO maize. In these fields, samples were taken systematically at certain locations. Cylinders that catch pollen or pollen traps were set up. The neighboring parcels of private commercial maize were also officially sampled with the consent of the owners. The results regarding the cross-pollination risk are clear. The prescribed isolation distance of 50 meters is more than enough to keep the GMO content in all surrounding maize parcels between zero and the official 0.9%, regardless of the wind direction or the method of harvesting. Maintaining a 50 meter distance doesn't mean that there is absolutely no cross-pollination. In almost all bordering maize parcels, and of course especially in those that were in the prevailing wind direction, 
Ilvo found that a few maize plants at the edges of the field were pollinated by the GMO maize, as expected. But, also as expected, the micro percentages of GMO decreased dramatically as the location of the point samples was farther from the border with the GMO field. The average GMO content in the fields that were 50 meters or more from the GMO maze was not found to be higher than 0.04% at any point. This is thus lower, in fact over 22 times lower than the official 0.9% limit. Finally, Ilva also studied all the risks of admixture during harvest and transport. To investigate both forage harvesters and maize threshers, half of all the fields studied were harvested as green maize, and the other half as grain maize. The maize thresher used was a Case New Holland CX8050 combine harvester. The agricultural contractor emptied it at the end of the GMO field according to the usual practice. It was then used to harvest a non-GMO field, and samples were taken there to detect any residual GMO materials. Ilvo found that a large amount of threshed GMO maize did indeed remain stuck in the internal threshing drums, shakers and sieves, which then mixed into the first few meters of maize harvested from the non-GMO field. Disassembly and thorough cleaning of the threshers would be theoretically possible, but this is time-consuming. The researchers have a more practical recommendation for threshers. Plant a strip of non-GMO maize with your GMO field, which you harvested immediately after the GMO crop, to flush out the harvester, so to speak. The forage harvester used in the experiment was a Case New Holland FR9060. The internal construction of this machine allows much less harvested GMO material to remain in the machine when compared to a thresher. The forage harvester didn't therefore pose any risk with regard to admixture of the harvests. Transport also posed little problem. Spreading of harvested GMO material into the environment can be prevented entirely if the wagons are simply not overloaded. We'd like to say a little bit more about sampling. Just before and during the harvest, the researchers collected maize samples in three ways. They picked a number of ripe ears at defined locations. They took location-specific samples with a mini forage harvester and mini thresher adapted for research purposes. And they also composed bulk samples for each field by collecting a number of samples of green maize or grain maize from the commercial thresher or forage harvester and mixing them. By comparing these samples, Ilvo formulated its advice about how inspectors can take samples in a practical and reliable way in the future. To conclude, the evaluation of coexistence of maize crops was based on very thorough experimental design. With this study, Ilvo was able to demonstrate scientifically that GMO maize cultivation in Flanders is feasible in practice on the basis of the current coexistence regulations, without interfering with neighboring non-GMO maize cultivation. A 50-meter isolation distance is a safe margin against the risk of cross-pollination. The primary concern is to deal carefully with the residual seeds and harvested material in the machines. Farmers and agricultural contractors who wish to cultivate GMO maize in the future should familiarize themselves with the coexistence study report and the resulting practical recommendations.